Bibimbap is probably one of the best known Korean dishes, especially in the United States, and for a good reason. What it is is actually really simple. It's rice topped with stuff that you mix together and eat. Hi, I'm Jihae Kim. I'm chef at Miss Kim Korean restaurant in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and today we're making bibimbap. The word bibimbap itself means mixed rice. You can have so many variations of it, but that's pretty much the gist of it. And today we're gonna make beef bibimbap with different vegetables. So, bibimbap cannot happen without the rice. The pop means rice, it also means meal, but in this case, with rice. You used to say, I don't know if they still say it, like a woman is ready to marry when they know how to make rice. Rice is important, it's a sense of life and base of Korean meal. And when your mother or grandmother or auntie sees you, instead of asking how you are, she will ask you, have you eaten? And that eaten part directly translates to have you had any rice? You can rinse this rice until the water runs clear. Or if you're lazy like me, you can just dump the water and it's fine, yeah. Typically, when Korean people uh, make rice, we don't really add salt or anything to it, but for this particular rice that's designed for bibimbap, I'm gonna add just a touch of sesame oil. One of the popular iteration of bibimbap is stone bowl bibimbap, right? Tolso bibimbap. And the use of stone bowl to cook rice goes way, way back like a few centuries back. And that's the traditional vessel to make rice in Korea. And it does make the rice extra delicious. However, rice cookers are very advanced. Mine sings to me and tells me when it's ready. <laughs> I really do have to talk about the history of bibimbap. Some say it's from the palace and kings used to eat it as like a light munch. And if you think about what bibimbap usually looks like, I mean, the one that we're gonna make has really nice beef on it. So seaside bibimbap may have shellfish and seaweed and some rice and maybe fish or raw fish. Another theory was that at the end of like winter season, at the end of the year, palace maidens whose job it was to cook would go through their pantry and find all these ingredients, dried vegetables, dried ferns, roots, mushrooms, things like that and then they were sort of clearing out the pantry for the new year and making this dish, uh, putting many different ingredients in there. Every holidays, Koreans would have this big feast that's dedicated to our ancestors. And every time we make a big feast, we have all these leftovers and then we put that on the bowl and then make it together. Lastly, if you're a farmer and you're harvesting rice, then it's too much to bring all the lunch stuff, all the panchan and rice and everything else separately into the field for lunch. So it was easier to put it all in a bowl. Okay, so those are all varying competing theories. But what it tells me is that one, it needs to come over rice. Two, it's enjoyed from as high of a status as king or if you're a farmland laborer. So it's, it's for the people. This is a, a actually pretty typical Korean barbecue beef marinade recipe. So generally some sort of ar aromatics, so like scallions, very commonly used, garlic, very commonly used. But I like to use this uh, variation on this less known Korean barbecue marinade called Noviani. Not only does that marinade get garlic, it also gets ginger. It's soy based. There are three sauces that I consider Korean mother sauces. That's soy sauce, that's ganjang, chili paste, that's gochujang, and soy paste, that's tenjang. And what these three elements are providing is salt and complexity and savoriness. And then it's balanced out by some sort of sweetness. This recipe I really like because it uses sugar and rice syrup. It's uh, rice and water just cooked together until rice breaks down to a point that it becomes a syrup. And then we're gonna add some fruit juice. When Asian pear is in season, I just use microplane or food processor to zip it and then get Asian pear juice. But you can also conveniently have pear juice, add it just a little bit. So it adds not just sweetness, but it's like a, a fruity sweetness. It's adding complexity by like 
putting in three different kinds of sugar in there. And this is a, a pretty strong marinade, so you don't really need that much time, but you want to work your marinade into it. So you just sort of like give it a massage. And when I say massage, it's not just a descriptor, it's actually a direct translation. Sometimes Korean barbecue dish like this is called chumulak. Chumulak is this knitting motion. Knit, marinate into that meat. You're sort of getting a twofer, you're getting a bibimbap tutorial, but you're also getting Korean barbecue tutorial. It's this Korean barbecue dish called saryamyeok, and it translates to a meat that you eat on a snowy night. <laughs> Koreans used to hunt a lot. If you hunt a lot, you get meat. And you get meat, you get barbecue. What I consider the most important element of bibimbap is vegetables. Different types of regional bibimbap has certain vegetables that they use, but I think it's more important to remember the tenets of building a bibimbap. So I already said rice and a protein, and then the vegetable needs to be in season, ideally locally sourced, and you want to have colors in mind. When I say color, it's because bibimbap is a dish that you eat with eyes first, and then you smell it, and then you mix it like bibim, because it's mixed, and then you eat it. So it's supposed to satisfy all of your senses, right? Because it's the smell, the, the vision of it, the texture, and the crunch sound, and then the flavor. So color is really important, and in the height of the summer or early fall, that's really easy. And whenever you make Korean food, you want to ideally shoot for having five colors in your dish. And that is called obangsek, which means five important colors. And generally those colors are black, white, red, yellow, and green or blue. This sort of speaks to Eastern philosophy of five elements or five directions of the universe that is east, west, north, south, and, and the sky. For me, it's a dish that speaks to self-care because you're sort of giving yourself uh, a bowl of healthy, nutritional goodness that satisfies all of your senses. That's a miniature of the universe in your head. Bibimbap in the United States, especially the things that you would see is carrots, zucchini, cucumbers, like feature prominently. And that's sort of like a based off of Jeonju bibimbap, where a lot of ingredients are available in Jeonju area. But the fact that each region of Korea has different types of bibimbap, and the fact that bibimbap is enjoyed from like kings to the farmers, I think it's uh, more important to not obsess over which vegetables to use, but to obsess over the seasonality of the vegetables and using what's locally available. So I grew up Christian, not as Buddhist, but I was very, very tempted to go to Buddhist temples because one of the most famous dishes for Buddhist cuisine is the Buddhist bibimbap. And that is like the height of best practices for bibimbap and how to treat vegetables, right? Because Buddhist uh, cuisine is simply flavored, must use seasonal and must use local. And it's specified to like a two mile or whatever radius it is from where the temple is. So they grow their own vegetables a lot. And because the vegetables are so tasty and in season, even though Buddhist bibimbap does not have meat and does not have egg, does not have garlic or anything too spicy, it is the best bowl of bibimbap that you can eat. It's not a modern invention. There are documents of like 17 different kinds of bibimbap recorded from Joseon era. And I'm gonna wager all these sort of quick, like nice or fast food places with rice bowls with avocados and different things on it. I lay claim to all the rice bowls in the United States that it started with the bibimbap. So it's sort of Korean. As you can see, bibimbap has many components. So it takes a lot of veggie prep, knife work. But once you have these ready, it's like ready to go. Now we're gonna make the gochujang sauce. And this is like the most commonly used bibimbap sauce, but you can also just make soy sauce based version. The creation story of Korean nation starts with a tiger and a bear approaches a god and say, hey, we wanna be humans. What can we do to become human beings uh, and not, not animals anymore? And 
the god says, okay, I'm gonna give you 100 days. You're gonna go into the cave, both of you. I'm gonna give you bitter greens and lots of garlic. And that's what you're gonna live off of. And tiger lasts like a couple days and say like, oh, screw this. I don't wanna be a human and then runs away. The bear perseveres with lots of bitter greens and lots of garlic, becomes a woman, human, and, and then the god marries her and then have children, builds a nation, that is Korea. So bears and the garlics and the bitter greens, very important to our culture. Okay, now we have all the elements of bibimbap and we can build it. So we have rice, Korean people like fluffy rice, so, so we'll fluff it first, little rice in the middle. When building the bibimbap, I like to alternate the color to make the color really pop. I'm gonna use my hands. And there you go. We are missing black, but we have white, yellow, green, red, almost the universe in your hand for all of your senses. Now that we have it beautifully plated, how to eat bibimbap? Look at it, eat it with your eyes first, smell it. And it has a really nice uh, smell of all the vegetables and the uh, caramelized meat and sesame oil. Pro tip, use chopsticks to mix it. There's nothing wrong with using spoons, but if you are really a connoisseur of bibimbap, then you wanna uh, facilitate the mixing without smooshing the vegetables. And then my favorite part, you have beautifully composed dish and just go make a mess of it. Yeah, pop that egg, mix it all together. So this way you're sort of like getting all the ingredients mixed really well, have it incorporated without ruining the texture of each vegetable. Use a spoon to heartily tuck away and pay attention to the texture as well as the flavor. Mm. Now, crunchy, crunchy. And bibimbap is a kind of bowl that every bite will have a different flavor and texture. I hope you enjoyed this mess of a universe in your bowl that pleases all of your senses and that symbolizes self-care or care for other people. This is why we eat bibimbap.